Good morning. Good to be with you on this Wednesday morning. Let's take a look today at our confessional statement, our call to confession, our statement of faith. This week, Article 7 of the Belgic Confession concerns the Word of God and it concerns its trustworthiness, our, uh, our need to rely on it, and its ability to deliver, right? How does the Word of God do what it does? Why do we know that it's such? And why do we believe that it's such? And how do we know that what it claims is true? And the Belgian Confession does a really good job of kind of helping us think through all of those various questions. So the statement is before you on the post, believers in Jesus, what do we believe? We believe that this Holy Scripture contains the will of God completely and that everything one must believe to be saved is sufficiently taught in it. For since the entire manner of service which God requires of us is described in it at great length, no one, even an apostle or an angel from heaven, as Paul says, ought to teach other than what the Holy Scriptures have already taught us. For since it is forbidden to add or subtract from the Word of God, this plainly demonstrates that their teaching is perfect and complete in all respects. Therefore, we must not consider human writings, no matter how holy their authors may have been, equal to the divine writings, nor may we put custom, nor the majority, nor age, nor the passage of time or persons, nor councils, decrees, or official decisions above the truth of God, for God's truth is above everything else. So we understand that our need is not just to kind of have a kind of a blanket notion of saying, yep, it's God's word. What does that mean when we say that it's God's word, that God's word is God's word? What, what, what does that hold for us? What does that require of us? What kind of weight are we putting on it? And can scripture handle that weight? And the answer, of course, we believe is yes, it certainly can. It is God's word. All scripture is God breathed. And we believe and trust that it is certainly reliable as God's word. And we hold scripture, uh, we hold the scripture which testifies to this very thing. Scripture itself declares the truth concerning God's word. Let's look together at a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, a text that we look to and rely on for our understanding of the reliability of God's word. The text for us, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting with verse 1, going through verse 8. This is God's word. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, or of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. What a blessed gift indeed this scripture is for us. When we open the pages of God's word and we, we take it in, we realize that we're holding that which is holy. I mean, not the book itself. The book itself was printed by a publisher, just like any other book. It is, it's paper, it's ink, it's pages, it's bound together. The book itself is just a book. But what it contains, what it tells us of, what it reminds us about, what it, what it describes for us is the word of God. We're not going to add to it. We're not going to subtract from it. There's no reason to do that. The Holy Spirit has inspired the writers to write what they wrote. The Holy Spirit has, has preserved this over the centuries. And the Holy Spirit illuminates us so that when we read it, we understand what it says. We receive it. And then we apply it to our lives. And we do so because this is a gift that God has given to us. Paul struggled with making sure that he was saying, guys, I'm not here to try to be Mr. Wise Guy and Mr. Super Smart. I'm not trying to you know, impress you with my eloquence or anything else. All I'm going to preach to you is this, Christ and him crucified, which is what this book does, which is what the word of God does. Everything points to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. 
Everything points to Jesus, who is the one who fulfilled the plan of redemption. And it's all described here in Scripture. And we know this to be true. And so this great and glorious gift that we've been given, oh, it's a treasure indeed, because this is the very word of God speaking to us by the Holy Spirit and directing and establishing our steps, God's word for us.